It is my honor and pleasure to um, welcome uh, Dr. Vladimir Zev Zelenko once again. And I want to, first of all, thank you so much for being um, in touch with our community, with our people. And uh, we first would like to hear how are you, how's your practice, how's your treatment? Uh, so first of all, thank you, Rabbi. Um, I, I really enjoy talking to you and to your audience. Um, you know, I grew up as a Russian immigrant um, and I was never really happy or proud to be associated as a Russian. But um, uh, as I grew and I matured on my spiritual journey, uh, I really got connected to my uh, Ruski Kornye, my, uh, my, um, my, my, my roots, so to speak. And, and I take a lot of pride in my heritage, where I came from. And so uh, it's a real pleasure and, uh, and an honor to be able to speak to your audience. Regarding uh, <clears throat> my practice, so I, I'm sure you all know, but I, I moved uh, geographically from where I practiced to uh, Rockland County. Um, I actually had an office there before, but I'm, I'm making it my main, uh, main focus. And uh, that was for personal reasons and nothing really to do with, uh, um, you know, anything related to COVID-19 or so that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. But uh, regarding the treatment, so uh, the, the preprint of the study that uh, I've been talking about all these uh, weeks should be uh, published next week. And uh, what that means is that while we submit the uh, manuscript, the, art, the study to different magazines and they're reviewing it, uh, we are allowed certain magazines don't mind to disseminate the actual paper in what's called preprint form. So that's what's going to happen. It's going to be disseminated uh, all over the world. And that will be really the first um, uncontroversial or um, the first true outpatient, solid statistical um, data that represents um, treatment of COVID-19 with great success, which uh, at, th at this point, nothing is being offered except, uh, you know, uh, go to the hospital. So um, this really should return common sense to the world and, and give uh, primary care doctors and patients the ability to uh, intervene uh, in this infection early and prevent all these terrible complications. So. Um, it's basically uh, a, the delivery of a, of a weapon system uh, that will completely revolutionize uh, the war, the global war against this, um, this terrible enemy. And if uh, scaled globally, in my opinion, the economies of the world could reopen overnight. And this infection will become no different than, let's say, the influenza virus. So manage it, we'll deal with it. The anxiety levels of the world should go, go down and all the negative consequences, unintended consequences, the collateral damage, so to speak, from the, the closing down of the world economies, social isolation, financial ruin, all these things uh, will, will begin to heal. And time is essential here. So that's my hope. And uh, I really believe that we're in the verge of doing that. Um, I see the political will um, building. I'm privy to certain information behind the scenes, which I can't reveal, but I am confident that there's a, a growing momentum of political will um, and the counteroffensive has begun. And um, I'm very optimistic of, of the final victory. Actually, in my mind, I already see the final victory. I don't know if you play chess, but a good chess player sees many moves ahead. So I, I see already, uh, I see the checkmate, but uh, we still have to do a little few moves, go through the process. Um, there was a study published uh, today from um, a Dr. Rich, I think his name is, from Yale University. Um, it was uh, published in a peer reviewed uh, national journal and um, he advocates 
for the immediate implementation of pre-hospital treatment. And he quotes my protocol. He, he references it. This is in a peer reviewed journal as well. So this is already uh, the second or third time, I believe, that uh, my protocol is being referenced to as a basis for uh, recommendation. So that's exciting. And that builds credibility, which is ultimately what I, what well, unfortunately, <laughs> that's what I need because uh, I'm, I'm just a clinician, not a researcher. So for, for the academic world to accept um, the recommendations, you need to speak their language. And I'm learning how to speak their language. Now, you know, Rabbi uh, Shabuz is coming. You know, with your permission, just a few practical questions. Question number one, and it's going to be also question number two, but question number one, number and number of our videos were removed by YouTube, uh, silenced. And I have to tell you, I am from the former Soviet Union, and I'm pretty sensitive to censorship, especially in a very brutal way, with warning. And they claim that our conversation violates their community policy. And I just wonder, what does it violate, for goodness sake? I'm actually sending the messages. Can you please articulate and explain? What does it violate? And um, when you have such research coming from Yale University actually supporting your treatment, will it stop this uh, PR war against you and me and your treatment? The problem is, if I answer you truthfully, they're going to take this video off. But exactly. <laughs> right, so but exactly. Not. But let me tell you, um, you know, we're dealing with. Uh, let me give you an analogy uh, from fishing. I used to go fishing with my father, so usually a fish just is swimming, you know, it's relaxed, it's finding its food, and it sees a worm and it bites on the worm and there's a hook there and all of a sudden it, it feels that it's gonna be pulled out of the water and, and basically killed so it begins to fight it doesn't go easy it really begins to you know the big fish like the tunas or the marlins or whatever people sometimes professional fishermen have to fight with this fish for hours in order to break its will to finally be able to take it out <laughs> why do i bring it up because th this is a this is a uh, a conflict of biblical scale. What I mean by that is that, uh, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, the same patterns of the same spiritual and, and historical dynamics repeat themselves over and over in every generation. And what we're seeing now is no different than the very fundamental forces that involve the murder of Cain. Uh, a hevel by kind, or or the the, the 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 primordial sin, these are fights between good and evil, and the evil senses, it smells, its imminent destruction. So it's like a like a cornered animal, and it's very dangerous though because it's a cornered animal and it knows, so it's ready to do. Uh, you know, horrible things in order to try to it digs in into its uh, sick positions and it will double down on, on terrible decisions and so on. So it's not going to go quietly. So that's what we're seeing now. I would say, so when you say, why are our, our videos being, being taken down? Um, it has nothing to do with truth. It has everything to do with the self-preservation of the forces of Tuma. You know what? Uh, it reminds actually stubbornness of Pharaoh, who refused, um, despite that he was hit by the plagues again and again and again, but his stubbornness remained until its full uh, demise. So Eve says, Eve says that which means uh, God, you've created the righteous and you created the wicked. So the obvious question is, doesn't a person have free choice whether or not to be uh, righteous or wicked? So the answer is yes, but there are certain uh, types of uh, states of being that a person cannot reach on his own. So Paro was so bad that God took away from him his free choice. God took away from him the ability 
to repent, to come back. And that is what it means. It's a creation of God. You have to really, really, really earn it for God to take away your free choice. You're not going to be able to do it yourself. So that's a, a, a barossa to shame. Anyway, so yes, and I begin uh, because I don't want to. Uh, well, I do want to, but I can't uh, cause a lot of controversy right now. I would say that um, there are certain political figures in this um, country that have taken positions that are uh, so terrible and uh, opportunities have been given to them to uh, change their ways and get on, onto the right side of history and they're still refusing it. And I had that very same thought that God took away from them uh, their uh, free choice ability to lead to their ultimate destruction. Thank you. But on a practical level, uh, there's uh, anything I can do to argue, uh, to appeal to YouTube administration and say, look at this Yale University professor who actually supports this. Like, why are you doing it to us? Like, you're not helping us to educate our community. You're taking away, um, actually. Yes. Um, I, I don't, uh, I mean, my strategy is to completely go above the heads, direct to consumer, direct to the goodwill of, of uh, good-natured people around the world and, around, you know, in this country, and getting into a conversation even you know, uh, if you fight with something dirty, you're going to get dirty yourself. I really, feel, I really feel that it's a waste of time. We just have to go look at Chile Rebbe and 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 use every single resource. And let me tell you that um, it is is in a, in a in a week or two when the truth is revealed. It's already, by the way, the horse is out of the barn. This can't even be stopped. Even if I wanted to stop it, I couldn't. It has a life of its own now, and um, and it's in multi, like the way I designed it, that it should come from different nodes. So not one node could be extinguished. You know what I mean? So um, the truth is is about to, to emerge. And it's the truth itself that will destroy. We won't have to do anything. It will become so obvious to everyone who who was the uh, the architect of this uh, unnecessary uh, global trauma and who was the uh, forces that prevented the solution to this global trauma from being uh, accepted, it will become extremely obvious. And that itself uh, will take care of whatever we need to take care of. So I hope the punishment for uh, these people may be actually the feeling of shame and guilt possibly for not preventing death of so many people and, and financial devastation of uh, unprecedented and history proportions. But the move, so, yeah. Please. I don't think they'll feel guilt or I don't, I don't think they'll feel shame and because if they're able to make decisions that lead to the, you know, to the deaths of, of tens of thousands, if not more, hundreds of thousands worldwide, if not millions of people, um, that shame is not going to do it. What, what will do it is the complete destruction of their reputations and uh, re rejection of them socially and the loss of financial resources and credibility so that they will no longer be able to function uh, in any um, serious way in terms of causing uh, chaos and, and, uh, and evil. So I think that, um, uh, you know, ultimately what we want to do is emasculate, castrate, uh, castrate the, the forces of evil so they become impotent. I would even say more possibly, as you know, that our rabbis teach us that uh, we need to um, take away the darkness by the forces of light as you said actually before. So I hope that your treatment uh, that is recognized already by so many doctors, that thousands of doctors actually report their own experience and practices, uh, that it will empower uh, medical professionals that will give health 
uh, to people and it will help to restart the economy. Now, on a different uh, note, I wanted to ask you, as we actually leave this uh, quarantine behind us, uh, some people, and I'll tell you, me included, doubtful. In other words, we're a bit scared. I didn't speak to my uh, children, some of them for a while. I like didn't want to get closer to them. I am going to my community tonight to join the shul and I'm going to see them first time. Uh, are we still like in an imminent danger of second wave? And for instance, I didn't get COVID-19 even though I was a month with, the, with my daughter who was sick here. I didn't get it and I don't even have antibodies. So do I need to be personally, I need to be like very protective or it's in a way behind us. Um, it's not behind us, but you don't have to be scared. You just have to be smart and prepared. So I do advise the high risk patients to be taking prophylaxis. So um, especially if you're going to now venture out into places where, uh, you know, there's other people, you may want to take quercetin and zinc, or if you can get it, hydroxychloroquine and zinc on a, on a reduced dosing schedule for prophylaxis. If that's if you don't have antibodies and you're high risk. Um, I myself stopped wearing a mask and I actually will sit in front of, uh, you know, talk to someone six feet away or so because I prophylax myself and, I, and I'm not worried. Um, but, but you're also, not taking a mask, just for, to clarify, you taking the mask means that you're not scared for, you, for sending the virus to them because you know, based on your uh, test results, you're not carrying a virus. But this mask, regular mask at least, will not really protect you. No, I don't think it does. And um, if someone's acutely ill or if someone is, you know, a dentist or someone is seeing patients or, you know, that's a different story. But if you're going to shul, uh, again, I'm not going to recommend not wearing masks because um, I'm not in the position to say that. I'm just saying for myself, I feel comfortable enough in the prophylaxis, my, my experience, the prophylaxis, and with the, what I'm seeing, the, I mean, we still don't have herd immunity, but um, I have not seen a new case and neither have my colleagues of COVID in a few weeks already. So, um, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna come back. It will come back. I feel though that um, if we are prepared for it and we have the resources available and we're stocked up um, and there's a proper standard of care or policies in place, there's really very little, I don't know, do you fear the influenza virus? I, I don't know, I don't think you do. I think if you get it, uh, uh, you'll uh, take the Tamiflu, right? This, it, that's the concept, that's how it's gonna be. It's just, again, this is a new virus and, and so we're still learning the details, but in, in my opinion, that's what I see happening. Now, I wanna say something about Shavuos. Please, and please, to, please, that, no, right, 100%, yes, please. So in other words, and, we're uh, tonight, tonight is a holiday and you say shvuiz, but I have to tell you, many of our viewers never heard that word. What are we celebrating? Um, getting to know God, ultimately. When, that's when God said hello to, uh, to the Jewish people. At the same time, we all heard him and he uh, established our, the, the relationship that is, that is permanent and everlasting and he did that uh, by giving us uh, his wisdom and expressing his will and he did that through our glorious Torah both through the revealed and, and concealed aspects of, of, of the Torah um, and he he came down on Har Sinai the mountain the, Har, the Mount Sinai and he did a very interesting um, event. What I mean by that is like this. The Medrash says, uh, and I'm, now I'm going to talk to the, um, to the youth, the young Russian Jewish, um, um, you know, teenagers, adults that are finding their way in the world. You probably by now realize that materialism is only part of the um, prescription for, for happiness. A fulfillment but it, it's far from enough and perhaps this crisis even this world pandemic got your attention 
And I remember myself struggling through my spiritual journeys, um, coming to terms with the understanding that material wealth and, and fame and, and prestige are not the fundamental uh, building blocks of inner peace and happiness. They're important, by the way, but they're um, only part of the orchestra. It's only part of the prescription. So there's also a spiritual dimension uh, to our lives. And that spiritual dimension or, or soul dimension is uh, subtle, and but it requires, just like the body requires uh, food, the, the soul also requires nur uh, nourishment. And it's a different type of nourishment. It's, it's a, it's a nourishment that involves proper thought, meditation, um, learning, observance, and so on, and the feeling that you're connected with the life of life, the source of all life, and so on. So before the Torah was given, there was a uh, iron curtain, a gezerah, uh, uh, between the spiritual world and the material world. There was a, the two were completely separate, like uh, many of us live <laughs> nowadays. But uh, when Hashem came down, Yerod al-Hahar, when Hashem came down on Mount Sinai, the Torah tells us that that represents the nullification of the barrier between spirituality and physicality, which basically means the following, that now you can take the physical world and if you sanctify it, if you use it in the right way, um, it becomes a vessel that grasps spirituality and divinity and reveals it in a permanent fashion. So the world itself becomes holy. So what that means is, is the following, that if you make a dollar, you know, to make that dollar, it's not so easy. You have to use your mind and, and, and your heart and your arms and, you know, all these uh, skills and, and energy. And when you get that dollar bill or whatever it is, that represents that energy. Now you have a choice. What are you going to do with that dollar? You can go and um, self-indulge, let's say, or you can use that dollar, let's say, for a, a, a divine purpose. And when you do that, by the way, that divine purpose may be to buy the most beautiful piece of steak and have it on Shabbos. In other words, you're doing it to glorify the name of God, not to glorify your uh, animal tendencies. <laughs> so, if, if you use the, you know, I want to tell you, I get a Mazel Tov. I, I bought a house um, last week. It's a beautiful home. It's uh, magnificent. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Mazel Tov. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I feel that it's, it's, a, it's a blessing from God that he um, has bestowed upon me that it's an opportunity to to show um, a concept that you could be a very successful doctor you could be world renowned maybe you can even save the world but uh, you have to acknowledge simultaneously that everything's from God and that you're nothing I'm nothing it's not about me and what I see is the more I go in that direction the more uh, all the things that I used to want as a, a secular Russian Jew, you know, wealth, cars, all, all these things have happened naturally. So what I've, what I've noticed is that a spiritual journey is not a contradiction at all to any material pursuits. On the contrary, it, it, it says, it's the blessing of God that makes you rich. It opens up channels of blessing in every aspect of your life, in wealth, if, in, in... If I may say here, because you're a wonderful example of buying food for your table to glorify God, not yourself, is a very delicate, and I'm not sure even um, all our people understand it. Obviously, when you have a dollar and you can feed the hungry, this is God's will. Obviously, when you have a home and you can invite guests and share your 
Shabbat table, your table with them and be hospitable. Uh, instead of saying my home is my castle, you say it at castle of God. This is home of God. I'm just a custodian. And the more you custodian and nothing else, the more God gives blessings to people and guests and poor and hungry through you, the more you nullify yourself. But the greatest level, of course, is even when you're taking care of your own personal needs and, and buying a house, you're still doing it not for yourself. That is the real, real. in other words, if, even if you're eating your, your uh, steak on your Shabbos table and you don't have guests, you still don't do it just selfishly. Am I right? 100%. And I have to tell you that it's, first of all, the Torah is so balanced. It's so uh, perfect in its um, approach uh, for a Jew to live. So, for example, you know, Hayecha Kodman, the Torah says you have to feed yourself and your family first. You don't have to give away everything you have to, to the poor, let's say. Um, there are guidelines how to give charity, how to give uh, a miser. If you want to give more, you should give more. But there, there are guidelines. But there's nothing wrong with securing your family's basic needs. Make sure that they're comfortable. Make sure that you have a chavos uh, uh, you know, peace, peace of, of mind. mind. And 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 you should enjoy the the beautiful um, blessings. You know, it says that God didn't have to make a sweet apple. The Gemara, it's a taste. The, the apple, it's a candy of God. He gave you a candy. He didn't have to do it. And you see that in many, many other ways that he, he, he bestows upon you, but there's a reason for it. It's that it should be used in partnership with him for your enjoyment, but simultaneously your enjoyment should be the sanctification of, the, of God. And by doing so, you, it opens up everything that you, you don't even know what, what you want. You, don't, you can't even imagine the things that you, um, you are really waiting for you. Because we have limited minds. But, so anyway, I, I would like to say to you like this. I'm a, I'm a, thank God, a very successful doctor. I've been blessed with eight children. Um, thank God, I'm blessed with an ability to support them. Thank God. And I have, as you know, the you know, kind of the world's attention and, and maybe even support or admiration. But personally, it means nothing to me. I, honestly, if you ask me what I want to do, I just want to get on the floor and play with my 10, 10 month old daughter and spend time with my children and, and the people I love. If, if I had my choice, but I don't have a choice. God put me in a, in a, in a position. So I'm here telling you that I have everything that you, my wrong, young Russian Jewish uh, um, friends that are finding your way, I have everything that you want, but thank God. But I'm telling you that the, it's not about that. It's, it's about developing the, your spiritual nature that leads to psychological and emotional health and creates the, the stable structure that you could use of God's resources well. You know, 90% of people that win the lottery lose their minds. They go crazy because they don't have the, the skill set or the approach or the psychological framework to use it properly. Uh, can you hear me, Rabbi? I can't tell. Hello? Yes, yes, we do. Please. Yes, yes, we do. Continue. Okay. Yes. So it's all about the more you develop yourself spiritually, uh, that which leads to psychological and emotional maturation, the more resources could be given to you that you could use properly, because otherwise it, it will destroy you. So that's the balance. That's what, what for me, the giving of the Torah, the nullification of the barrier between the spiritual and the material and the fusion into one means that the physical could be spiritual and the spiritual could be physical and it's one entity. It's a union between heavens and earth in a way in which the heavens is a purpose. And maybe the earth has to be dedicated in a way. You will tell me if I'm right or if I understood it correctly. It's, that's what our rabbi said in the Talmud. They said, 
uh, if I'm not for myself, then who's for myself? In other words, if I'm not gonna take care of myself and my health and my salary and my family and my house, who's gonna do it for me? I have to be responsible. It's a country of respons cultural responsibility. But if I'm only for myself, then what I am, not only even who I am, what I am, I'm nobody, I'm nothing because I'm doing all for the selfish reason. So at certain point, I need to go beyond that searching for meaning and purpose. And if not now, then when? 100%. And, and ultimately, I don't think it's about going to heaven. It's about bringing heaven down to earth and making this, this existence, this world, uh, a divine place and, and a place where there's truth and there's peace um, and there's true love. And, and true light. And ultimately, that means the revelation of the knowledge of God to all of humanity. It is so, actually, actually, it is exactly what the rabbi said. They said, maybe for some people, uh, Bible, Torah is from above, from heavens. But really, uh, Moses brought Torah down from heavens to earth, which means heavens in the Torah. So heavens is here to bring heaven and holiness in, in this world and our daily routine and daily lives. Amen. So my blessing to, to, to all the Jewish people in the world, my brothers and sisters and uh, my nation, Kol Yisrael, Raven Zeb is a basically mean and, all, and, all hum, and all humanity, whoever will listen to you as well. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Um, and and of course, um, uh, listen. Let me let me be very honest. Um, we have the Creator and we have uh, the creation, and we know that the Jews are God's chosen people. Now, that's not a statement of arrogance. It's a statement of responsibility. We've been set aside to bring the knowledge of, of the creator into creation. That's the unique role of the Jew in history. So peace within us is equivalent and analogous to peace in the world. And the whole world treats us the way we treat ourselves. So by having uh, like a body, a body needs a healthy liver, healthy spleen, kidneys, you, you know, you can't have broken pieces because then the whole body suffers. We as a nation it's ourselves, we have to be a healthy nation, a healthy uni unity. We have to be a cohesive sense of oneness. And what that does is it, it reveals the unity of God in the world. And when the unity of God is revealed in the world, the light of God illuminates all of humanity and brings to humanity, all of humanity, the, the love, the peace, and the uh, blessings that we all need. So again, my blessing to all of humanity and that this should be the end of darkness, the end of falsehood, and the beginning of the uh, ushering in of an era of harmony and light and love, peace, and union with God and to know him the way he knows himself. Amen. I want to thank you for that. And first of all, say maybe also the unique uh, uniqueness and holes of Jewish people and our Torah that we are responsible and we can help and reveal the responsibility, uniqueness of every nation, every nation, every human being has his unique role and we want to bless everybody, whoever listens to us, to find their uniqueness and their uh, blessings in the world. And I want to especially give blessings to you because you're doing so much for the world and for our people. So may Hashem give you strength and health to enjoy your wonderful new house for many, many years and decades with people that you love. And you should be a source of blessings. And all the people around you should be a source of joy for you and your family. All the best. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. And we'll add and say good Yontav and good Shabbos to you and everyone. Thank you so much.
Bye-bye. All the best. Thank you.